You're hit. You're bleeding, man. I ain't got time to bleed. Checking one, two, three, how's it going guys? So I apologize if this sounds kind of weird or funky because when I put my laptop to sleep, try to set this up, apparently my OBS system decided to reset everything by default. So I gotta fix this, loving it. So just take me a few minutes.
All right, that should probably fix it. There's an echo on my end, but I have no idea why. Whatever. We'll just leave it as it is. I was trying to get rid of the echo. Yeah, this should be fixed. You should be able to hear it now. Yeah. Of course, my cell phone is being a pain in the butt. Yeah. So, like I said, there's an echo on my end. That's what I was trying to get rid of. But at least you guys can hear me now. Sorry about that. So my Christmas was pretty good overall. I did get, surprisingly, my parents got me a copy of Batman vs. Predator number three. This is the final version of the Batman vs. Predator comic book franchise. And I already have it, which is something they didn't know, which is fine. I usually take duplicates of the comic book I get it signed by the artist and get it graded. So usually I'll have a universal grade by CGC, which is the blue label. And then from there, I will have a signature grade by CGC, which is the yellow label. So I usually have that. Yeah. Like I said, I apologize for the sound. There's an echo in me, but if you guys can hear me clearly, I apologize. I was just trying to get rid of the echo, but Tell me, you guys, what did you get for Christmas? Anything Predator related, any at all? Or did you usually get the clothes and stuff like that? That's pretty much the only thing I got Predator related was the uh, comic book. And of course I have other stuff that I bought for myself that came before Christmas. So I finally got issue number four, Archie versus Predator and next month it'll be the final issue of issue five so i got that uh, there's still some lag issues uh, all right hold on i'm actually on wi-fi so as far as lag is going to jump between six thirty six kilobytes per second versus 570 so let me see what the output is, I'll just simply change it to 500 or 550. If it still lags, I'll try to minimize as much as I can. I okay, it should balance itself out. Like I said, I really want to build my own computer because this is an old laptop. The desktop I have over here is 12 years old and it can't handle live streaming. It wasn't designed for that when it first got created. This is a gateway desktop over here and this laptop is about, uh, yeah, it's about 10 years old. This is my four new artist custom series figures two minute film strips from which film oh 2010 and avp original 35 millimeter fox productions that's cool i have the only trailer i'm missing is predator i have predator 2 i actually have two strips or two actual reels from the trailer so i have predator 2 avp avpr predators I don't know if a trailer for The Predator is able to be obtained, but the only one that I'm missing out of the five is Predator that I'm missing. Yeah, Wolf, it's just... I don't want to do Windows 10. I really don't. I've heard security issues with Windows 10 you don't have icons, you have apps, because apparently with Windows, they try to do the whole app popularity, like your cell phone. I'm like, I don't want apps. If I wanted apps, I would stick with my cell phone and live stream from that, but you don't have the capabilities in, I guess, luxury or features as you do on a desktop. And I want to do the whole motherboard, the graphics card, the um, not the water cooling, 
because I'm scared of death of the water cooling pipes. Yeah, I'm sorry. It OPS disconnected. It's connected again. Sorry. Like I said, if I'm on a Wi-Fi, it's going to jump across. I can't hardwire because the modem's all the way downstairs and I'm all the way upstairs, so I have to use the Wi-Fi at this current moment. But what I was trying to say, sitting here in love, if, or Wolf, if you can hear me, is that sitting here in love, that prayer to real, I was actually the one that gave that to her as a gift. So you guys can hear me now, right? We're good? Sound is there? Uh, yeah, well, if I gave it to her. Not a lot of people collect trailers, and a lot of people, I guess, are not aware that you can buy the trailers, but I bought the trailer reels, the entire reel from beginning to end of the trailer. Usually a trailer would be, depending upon the, there's, I think, two versions of the trailer. There's a one minute, and there was a minute and a half or two minutes. The two minutes is the second one. So when you first get a teaser, the teaser usually be about a minute. The trailer itself with more footage is gonna be about maybe another minute and a half to two minutes. So she has, I think, the minute and a half one from Predator 2 as a trailer. Ah, uh, trash. Yeah, so you check out issue one of the AVP, Thicker Than Blood. The Iron Predator designs look awesome. They do look awesome. As a matter of fact, that's what we're going to discuss a little bit. So if you've already gotten or received your copy of Alien vs. Predator, Thicker Than Blood, I'm not quite sure about it, mainly because I need more context in relation to what's going on. So I'll, spoiler alert, because I'm going to show you some images out of this comic book, because the predators that are in this story are attacking civilians for God knows whatever reason. And I have no idea why. So if you look here, so you have a wolf looking predator attacking a civilian and I don't know why he's not armed he has no armor of any kind it's just him attacking a civilian now there's a mother and a father in this story and according to the father he took a shortcut through space and invaded predator territory I don't know if the predators were hunting at this time, if they were on an adjacent planet, but this goes against the code of honor when it comes to predator hunting mentality. Yeah, it's, I'll go to the page. Where is it? Here we go, it's a USSC Double Down. It's a private luxury ship. Uh, I'll show you right here, there's 112 passengers and 16 crew members and that little boy happens to be an artificial human being or android and apparently there's no weapons on this ship it's a private luxury ship and the predators are ended up attacking it i have no idea why Yeah, this is an interesting comic book, but I need more clarification on why the Predators are doing what they're doing. So I can't wait really for issue two to come out. It's just, why are you attacking civilians? It's a luxury ship. Again, there's no weapons. Yeah, Trash says, I reckon they'll elaborate more in the further issue. I hope so, because there's only four issues. So as the, per the cover of this comic book, it would assume as though based upon, and I'll show you it again really quickly, the artificial boy, which is I guess a brother, is taking full control 
of a xenomorph as a weapon. So that would be interesting. I'm just, you know, trying to see if the predators are now the villains in this story as opposed to the xenomorphs. That's going to be an interesting twist, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, Predator Wolf is very honorable. Duty nailed. Must have done something bad that ticked off a wolf. That's not the wolf, Preta. It may look like the wolf, but that's just, I guess, a clan bio helmet. I'm not sure why the artist, I think the artist is Doug Wheatley. Uh, it's a cool design, but it confuses the reader to believe that this is the wolf predator, and it's not. It just looks like him. <laughs> she was like eating THC brownies all day. Like in Amsterdam. Oh, that's interesting. Trash says it could be a preemptive measure to stop an outbreak. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, you're fine, Prita. It's, you know, Wolf, if Dark Horse follows the movie in the timeline technically this doesn't really have a timeline but they usually capture designs from films toys um when NECA came out with the kenner homage crack tusk predator and i think where are you yeah there you are i haven't done a review on this but that's only because he's loose but in alien versus predator or I'm sorry, Predator, Life and Death. He's got his own little comic book appearance. It's just what Dark Horse usually does. They'll use similar designs that was already been done in movies and action figures. And they'll put it in a comic book. Every Ocha is bound to have the same bio masks. Eventually, yeah. Until you just... <laughs> run out of conceptual ideas so there's that so yeah i really need uh, issue two which i believe obviously will be released next month that way i can understand why the predators are attacking a luxury ship and not a military based ship we'll have to wait and see yeah jimmy says it was crack tusk and the warrior pred from high wars that had the cameos I was really excited to see that. And I also, since we're on the crack tusk part of it, so I have made my very first payment and I've mentioned this before in a live stream. So if you remember this guy, and again, I have to refresh and fit the screen. So everyone can see it. I probably should have done this beforehand, but this is the one fourth scaled Prime One Studio Crack Tusk Predator statue with the exclusive alternate head swap with the light up eyes and the light up bio helmet or the cannon, sorry. Yeah, the bio helmet lights up and so does the cannon. And I made my very first payment today at Sideshow Collectibles. And I'm really, really excited. So that's one down, seven more to go. Seven more paintings until I review the one four skill Prime One statue on this channel. That's seven more months. So it'll be shipped out in July. Trash has meant to ask you, do you collect Godzilla figures? Uh, I like Godzilla a lot. I just don't collect Godzilla because you're talking about the same reason why I don't collect Batman is mainly because it's 65 years of a character and in every rendition of Godzilla, he's changed from 1954 all the way up until now 2019 with Godzilla King of the Monsters. So he's changed his looks. My favorite version of Godzilla would be the 1985 design as well as the 1990s Godzilla 
like the Godzilla versus Biollante and Godzilla versus Space Godzilla. That design is my ultimate, you know, favorite. But I don't collect any of this stuff. Mainly just Predator. Do you see that Nega is having a buy one get one a half off? Yes, and that's exactly what we're going to go top in now, Bucky. So there are sales, as I mentioned before, there's going to be after Christmas sales. And part of that is, and again, I have to now change this up. Sorry, guys. If you can read it now. So starting December 29th, that is tomorrow, through January 11th, which would be the following Saturday, two weeks from today, you get a buy one, get one half off on all NECA products in stores at Target. And I'm really excited about that, mainly because if I, like for example, I don't have the Emissary Predators, so I can be able to get, <clears throat> excuse me, with the Emissary 1 and Emissary 2, instead of spending close to $70 to getting both those figures, I can go to Target, get Emissary 1, and get Emissary 2 half off. So I'll be spending roughly around between $40 to $45 on both of those figures and be able to review on the channel. So maybe not this coming Wednesday, but the Wednesday after, there there will be a NECA review for because of that sale. So I'm really excited about that. BB2 Future Comics are pretty good. Oh, the Back to the Future comics? I haven't read it. I know that I'm behind on Big Trouble in Little China. I want to read those along with Old Man Bert. I guess is like an old version of Old Man Logan, but it's an older version of Bert from Big Trouble in Little China. Crap, Nega Target sale. I guess I'm shopping tomorrow. Yeah, Protea, you better get on that. That's just how it is. I don't necessarily hate shopping. I just, when I expect a stock to be there and come to find out there's only one thing that they don't have, they have a massive NECA display. They have the Bebop and Rocksteady, Godzilla. As a matter of fact, if you actually are following me on both Twitter and on Instagram, I posted a mini little hunt video at Target. They had everything other than the rewind version of the Berserker Predator with the missile launching plasma cannon, that small, I guess we'd say about five inch figure. That was what I was wanting. But they already, they still have the Lab Escape, the Fugitive, Ahab. So, and they also had the laser shot, but the box was damaged. It was, it was all right, but I wasn't gonna spend any money on a damaged laser shot, especially at Target. I'm like, no, you should not even be displaying that if the box is damaged. And I know you're not gonna reduce your price because of you know damage. So I'm not, I wasn't gonna buy it. It's only Target exclusive. Yeah. Let's see, there was something else. Oh yeah, the other thing about the sales involved, and there's actually a link down in the description below for liquorama.com. So here's your opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. So if you don't know what this is, this is the Dutch whiskey, it's a bourbon whiskey, that uh, is bottled again in, I think it's Texas. But I did do an interview with the CEO, Ryan Malkaveen at Silver Screen Bottling Company. And I'll make sure I leave that link up here for anyone's watching this live stream archived. That is on sale right now. Normally this is $49.99 or $35. This is half off via the link down the description below. So normally it's $49.99 per the link, but right now, per that link, it's $19.99 without shipping. So if you want to get your chance at getting the Dutch bourbon whiskey, 
predator themed alcohol and again you must be 21 to drink drink responsibly that's here's your opportunity of adding this to your collection and that link is down in the description guys so that's nor that's a good deal 19.99 for that big bottle as a matter of fact i'll show you how big that is so this is a pretty thick bottle uh the volume is 750 milliliters 45 percent alcohol per volume so that's on sale i'll put this on the sale <laughs> but it says that's the bomb that will get you bombed exactly that will get you to the chopper really quickly yeah see bucky already get to the chopper i enjoy my century toki from time to time but i need that yeah I think this is a very good uh, marketing option for Silver Screen Bottling Company and Liquorama, because especially after Christmas special and sale, that if you missed out on it or you were not aware of it, and you think that forty nine ninety nine is a little bit too expensive for your tastes, nineteen ninety nine half off. There you go. There's your opportunity. So again, as I said. That link is down to the description. The link should still be working and the sale should still be applying, being since this is only, what, three days after Christmas. So the sale might run all the way up until New Year's, but if the shipping is still being applied, you can go ahead and start drinking that on New Year's Eve on the 31st of Tuesday. I was going to, to try to do a live stream on New Year's Eve, but being since I know for a fact more than likely a lot of people may have plans, there was a vote that I did on my social media, again, on Instagram, um, predator underscore collectibles, Twitter, predator collect, uh, voting process about what was best Saturday or New Year's Eve, 60% won for today. So here we go. <laughs> so what did else did you guys do for the holiday season? Did anybody get any Predator stuff at all? Was it just me getting in the comic books? Any NECA figures? Pretty says, am I the only one that just learned Predators wrist blades can spin? So they curve either inwards or outwards. So I just learned it last night while rewatching AVP. Probably but it depends upon the situation and it was really cool Preta, if you break it down in slow motion the only top part of the blades because it's into the gauntlet so when they cut a section of the blades i don't know how they do it but that's why it's only used i guess one time the two double blades only a part of the section will spin into an opposite direction where the cutting edge of the blade is actually the part where, okay, well, if I need to cut something as opposed to going this way, I need to go now outward. So I will switch my blades so I can actually go outward to cut his tail. It was a really cool part of that movie. It was really interesting to see that because we always were used to predators cutting and slashing uh, forward as opposed to outward. Let's see, Predator, AVPR was released 2007. So yeah, this will be the 13th anniversary of AVPR. 2014 was the 10th. Sounds about right. Yeah. It was pretty awesome. And Wolf, I'm sorry that you're working on New Year's, girl. That's got to suck. I think I worked a couple of times on New Year's Eve. I got home late, couldn't obviously drink or enjoy myself. Uh, I got off at 10.30. My mom and dad were still awake because they wanted to watch the ball drop. Well, Chris says, I remember seeing trailers for AVPR. I don't remember seeing trailers. I watched it 
Christmas Eve and I kind of have mixed feelings about it in the theater because I was like, okay, this is not interesting at all. I didn't care about the humans. To me, they were cannon fodder. And I think it had to do with the cast. As soon as I saw the military base mom slash wife, it kind of reminded me of, okay, you're going to try to implement some kind of form of Alan Ripley base character into this. And it's just it was not my favorite movie. That's why it's in the bottom of my total poll. My the so out of my tier of what I like watching, usually it's going to be Predator, Predator Two, Predators, The Predator, AVP, AVPR in that order. So AVPR is my least favorite out of the Predator based movies. Yeah, it. Every human AVPR sucks, and they do. I did in my own cut of the movie, where it was just the wolf predator and the aliens fighting. It was a far more better movie. It was shorter, but I enjoyed it ten times more than the movie itself. When I did my cut, I cut out literally all the human interactions. I just focused on wolf, and I enjoyed it. Sheriff and the brother were good. Yeah, I think the sheriff and the brother had a much more stronger, not bond, but a chemistry when it comes to characters and their dialogue based upon what was happening than the high school kids and everything else that was going on. This it is not my cup of tea. Yeah, Wolf was awesome. I think that was probably when Wolf had the two xenomorphs, you know, up here by their necks. And then you know for a fact the Prey Alien was gonna come in and ruin it. I'm like, really? You're really gonna ruin this moment for me. Ugh. But it was awesome over the law. Oh here we go. Fan movies. Predator Dark Age, that definitely is number one. Batman Dead End and AVP Redemption. That's exactly how I feel about it, Trashed. In that order, too. So, what I really also want to talk about is, let me show you, I know most of you were not on here for last month's live stream for November, so let me show you what I got out of GalaxyCon. I got two prints. And I want you to get your opinion on it. So this is a glare. I'm sorry, it's still on plastic. This is a Predator print that I bought at GalaxyCon. So you can see there's Xenomorphs. There's a Predator. I'm just making sure there's no glare. This is actually one of the prints that I bought. So it's like a Cinema Cat base predator design with the blade this is actually really cool so you can see he has the wolf armor he has a wolf necklace claymore so it's a wolf based body with a cinema cat based head with no bio helmet and the xenomorphs are kind of surrounding him so there's that for my all-time favorite print this thing is huge I think it's 11 by 17 a little bit bigger this is the masked predator and the artist is Terry Huddleston and he did this I don't know if you can see it's kind of beveled based upon the paper there we go so the way the light shines on it this is a beveled where some of the parts of the paper is rising. And this is just my all time favorite Predator piece. So again, like I said, I'm sorry for the glare. I just wanna make sure you can see the dreads because usually the outlines are beveled and higher, but this is an awesome piece. And there's an unmasked version of this. And unfortunately, I was not able to get that, but I did want the masked version of this print. There's all the way down so you get the predator language 
on the far right hand corner to the skull the blades this is an amazing print and I'm very glad I was able to get this at GalaxyCon no it's not a bullet hole it's just I guess damage because there's always going to be damage on the jungle hunter and there is a blast mark on the jungle hunter as well so I guess he's taking this as a jungle hunter design, but he did his own little spin on it, which is, it's a huge print. And that's my favorite because he lot, he really did portraits and I have one of his portrait based predator designs and he decided to upscale that to being from the waist up. So I think that was pretty cool. Alien vs. Predator Seed. That is an oldie but goldie. It is on YouTube. The video quality is kind of old because at the time of its fil of filming, the person responsible for Alien vs. Predator Seed is a man named Pete Mander. And Pete Mander did the HR Giger based eggs. Normally the eggs, uh, as we see it, have four openings the original H&R Giger design only had the two openings for sexual reasons because the majority of his artwork is sexual based so there's that and so he did it those eggs as such he also sculpted and made all of the predator and alien suits some of the bio helmets you're not going to find anywhere else you might see some across on eBay but the Alien vs. Predator Seed is, I think, a very good overall fan film. I think in the time of fan films, it was Alien vs. Predator Seed that came first, then Batman, Dead End, Predator, Dark Ages, Alien vs. Predator Redemption. I could be wrong in that order. But I know based upon the age, Alien vs. Predator Seed was the first kind of bigger budgeted fan film. It's okay. I enjoyed it. But once Batman Dead End came out, I was exposed to that. And then you have Predator Dark Ages. The people who are responsible for Predator Dark Ages are now going to be coming up with Predator Akura. So it's a Japanese-based Predator fan film. And I hope to see that. Some people think it's going to be stupid. And I'm like, well, if you didn't like Dark Ages which is understandable, but at the same time, you have to understand we've never seen a film in the medieval times, so to have it be now in feudal Japan, based upon the two busts that are coming out from Cool Props, there is the Samurai Hot Toys figure that's very popular, and you can't get it unless you want to spend upwards of $600 or $700 on it. I can't wait for Predator Akuma. That's going to be awesome fan film, I think. Yeah, I'm just really, really excited to see more Predator stuff. And speaking of which, since we're on that, again, you'll have to forgive me. I'll have to adjust the video resolution, but I want to see the new Predator Hunter Grounds trailer with the female Yaucha. So let's talk about that one.
Stick to the mission. We're moving out. players. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Hands down, now I have to get a PlayStation 4 Pro for my birthday because my birthday is in April the 10th and this game will be re releasing on April 24th. Uh, I might do a video or a live stream. More than likely it'll be a video because I know this computer probably will handle it for a live stream option, but I'll definitely be buying the console, buying that game, and keep in mind, guys, that if you pre-order the game at GameStop, or I'm not sure if you also pre-order through Amazon, I might do the Amazon option. But the reason I'm bringing it up is if you pre-order it, of course I have to reset it so that way you guys can read it. The show must go on. There we go. So if you pre-order it right now, you're able to get the exclusive 1987 movie skin and the old painless minigun from Blaine. And that is uh, get early access to that weapon and item along with the skin when you pre-order to the game so i have to pre-order it just because that's just another skin on top of the other skins you're able to play berserker scout hunter uh, and the female along with the 1987 filmed skin so the fact that you're able to get it for pc and i think wolf you mentioned that i'm also happy that the game will be coming to pc those are your two options either through playstation the PlayStation 4, I mean, and PC, which is good, and I think that's a very good business sense to allow PC gamers, because as um, the gaming market, I'm something over my words, sorry, has a much more bigger hold on it than console. I could be wrong. I think it might be half and half at this point, where you have half or 50% of the market is on consoles, the other 50% is on PC. Again, I could be wrong, but I'm definitely going to the console route because my PC, I'm not going to try to run that game on it. Like it says, if, if you pre-order on the PS4 store, you get a themed background and profile pics. Okay. Now, in this case, Bucky, since you mentioned that, were you able to also get the minigun, as well as the background and the 87 skin. Because I'll do it that way if I do it through the PS4 store. This is the live stream of the game. Well, thank you. Only person doing monthly predator vids. I do, month, I do monthly live streams. I try to do weekly videos depending upon the circumstances. So for example, last month, or technically this month. I went to GalaxyCon, got two interviews with Stephen Grant and John Betty, two comic book artists for Predator vs. X and Alien vs. Predator Deadly of Species, and I'll leave those links right up here again for the archived version of this live stream. And I was just really, that's why I go to these events, because I try to diversify my video content library, mainly because yeah, I can do unboxings and reviews all day, every day, but that doesn't really set me apart as a Predator fan if I can gain access to certain individuals. Like, I think for 2019, this is probably the most successful that I think in relation to interviews that I've done with interviews from Ian White. Ian White, who plays Scar in Alien vs. Predator, he also plays Wolf in AVPR. 
I was able to get that interview even though it was short. He doesn't do a lot of YouTube videos at all. So I'm the, from what I saw, the third individual who was able to grab an interview with him for YouTube. I have the interview with Silver Screen Bottling Company and a few of the other comic book artists that have worked on Predator Comics for Dark Horse uh, for this year. I know last year I went to Hollywood and I'll leave that video up here. I think last year was a good year. This year was more productive in relation to the channel growth. So I'm really happy about that. So I appreciate that comment, Preta. I do my best that I can. So get a Kickstarter to do a, a new computer. I don't know what kind of computer I want to build. That's the thing. Because usually you can do a very good gaming PC for as little between 300 maybe $400, depending upon what hardware you put in it. If you just want it to run, and with all the hardware that's being released right now, like I said, this PC is 12 years old. Everything in it is already obsolete. The memory, the graphics card, everything in it is not on par as it should. Even if I were to take everything out of this PC and rebuild it, because I can just go ahead and use the case and put a new hardware in it with an upgrade. It might even be slimming down the cost a little bit, but I don't... I'm still not sure about using Windows 10 as an operating system. I like Windows 7. Windows 7 doesn't give me an issue or a problem. But with the security issues with Windows 10 and Windows trying to force you to use Windows 10, it, it's just about money. I'm not a huge fan of that. Chris says, that's what I mean. Your visits are substantial and you're not on to something you need compared to anyone else. Exactly. I try to be unique, I like being unique, I like being different, and you have to not necessarily beat at anybody else, you're really beating yourself. It's like, okay, I've already done this, what can I do to provide more content that has yet to be seen or that I haven't already touched on from previous videos? I might return to old ideas only because it's been a long time since I've done it, whether it be a NECA figure, like I haven't done a NECA figure for maybe two months. So there's that. Eagle Moss hasn't really released any new products here lately. I still miss products from them. Diamond Select Toys just released their gallery Predator piece. From my understanding, retailers are not getting that until sometime next month. I know City Hunter Love, I don't know if she's on here or not, we're watching, but she already has her statue I probably won't be reviewing that until next month, sometime in the end of January if I can get it. But that payment for that Crack Tusk statue, I think is gonna be halting a little bit on videos. Hopefully it won't. But my budgeting and my finances, I'm already calculating way ahead of time what I can get, what I can't get. So we'll have to wait and see. Let's see. Now I just wanna to touch on a little bit of not just the game itself, but the skins. I think the skins are gonna be awesome. So you have the Berserker Predator, and I can't wait to get the Berserker. And it's interesting they call this Predator the Berserker, because I keep thinking of the Berserker from the 2010 film Predators. So I just want to take a good look at him as bio helmet. And that's actually another cool thing about these designs is they are coming up with a lot of different renditions. Like this guy right here. I'm not going to change it. I'll just figure, leave it as is. And then you have the scout, increased speed, ultimate stamina. So depending upon what your goal is in the game, you'll have to select certain predator types to finish your mission. And I, this bio helmet I'm not a fan of, but that one looks pretty cool. I like that one a lot. And you have the Hunter, which is a, I guess a rendition of the Jungle Hunter with a very slight Jungle Hunter-ish type bio helmet. So you have versatile hunting style, balanced weapon choice. So that's a pretty good option with a different bio helmet. This one is okay. Again, not a huge pick for me. I like this one more so. 
and then you have finally the female Yahusha, and I think that she is awesome as a you know perfect option. And the reason I say that is because I know there are predator fans that are females, even though my analytics say there's only maybe about sixteen percent of my audience is female. But this gives even an option for female collectors who say, you know, I really rather have it be a relatable female predator hunting dragon on humans as a female as opposed to just being a male. So I think that was a very smart business decision, equality type of choice for Elphonic, because they are female predators in the Predator lore. Dark Horse Comics has touched on it. Steve Perry, uh, for I think his book was Forever Midnight, has touched on female predators. And I think this design is based on the Steve Perry description of what a female Yaucha looks like. So I think that's just a very cool, uh, like I said, gameplay option. I hope that she's a standard option to play with as opposed to a downloadable content or DLC character. So we'll have to wait and see. But what I was really excited is seeing the unmasked skin predator for predator hunting grounds. Now, I don't know if this is something that will hinder you from playing thermal vision because obviously you're not wearing your helmet at this time and I blew it up just to make sure you get it a nice good resolution of seeing what the skin is the texture I really do like how Elphonic was able to touch on the chips on his armor he definitely looks a lot older and his teeth is yellow you definitely see the veins in his mouth so they've definitely upped the graphics on this game by a lot. So I was really hoping they would improve the graphics as they move along with the trailers. So this definitely shows off that they said, you know, we're going to improve the graphics. That's what the fans want. The graphics doesn't really met fans' expectations on the first trailer. So let's see if we can go ahead and just boost up the graphics capabilities just a slightly better way than what it was before so i'm really liking that a lot so i'm really i can't wait for this game this game is going to be i'm playing it a lot i know it's online only but that just ups the replay value even more so than it is by itself but i hope there's going to be a single mode based upon what a lot of fans are looking for they're looking for nostalgia with predator concrete jungle on the ps2 maybe even with the replay value of alien vs predator that was released for the ps3 in 2010 so i hope that'd be an option i doubt it based upon the core values and fundamental basics of what this game has to offer so a lot of online gameplay is really popular right now on streaming with twitch video youtube gaming stuff like that whether you're playing call of duty battlefield fortnite overwatch so this might be for predator fans our fortnite overwatch version of what our fandom can offer from elphonic in relation to playing this game male female and different downloadable skins and even with NECA, they're coming out with a hunting grounds action figure that this to me is just insane so if you're looking at this this is the casted prototype of the predator hunting grounds action figure you can tell that by the plasma cannon the bladed weapon the bio helmet the backpack and i believe that's a gun i could be wrong or that's just the dual bladed gauntlet but in the armor you can see that this definitely is going to be a hunting grounds NECA figure that more than likely probably won't, we won't see until around April or May after the game is released because again every time NECA releases a figure is every three months or every quarter so each wave will be released so there will be a wave between January and March and then come April 
between maybe April and May, we'll see this particular figure be released at the time of Predator Hunting Grounds. And I think, yep. And there was another figure that they just released that Randy said put on Twitter. So we're getting yet another poster-ish version of Fugitive. I'll be honest with you, I already have, you know, the Fugitive poster version, the thermal one that I've already did a review for, and I'll leave that link up there as well in case you're interested. I'm not sure if I'm going to get this, more than likely I probably will, but there's nothing to me that stands out between the thermal and this particular Predator other than the light up eyes. That's just my personal preference. So to do another review on Fugitive, mainly because the weapons are gonna be the same, the sculpt is gonna be the same, I might just buy it to enjoy, or I might just do a review on it. I actually wanna know what your guys' thoughts are. Should I do a review on this one as well, or just hold off and do it again? Yeah, pretty. I agree. She says the password-ish figure doesn't really do it for me either. I think it's cool. Like I said in the review of the Fugitive Lab Escape, and again, I'll leave that link up right up here too. I want to see more LED options or the utilization of the LED light in the bio helmet. And I think this is a good option because you're definitely and accurately depicting what the poster looks like, that bluish one with the white lies, what or white eyes. I think that's awesome, but to review it is gonna be kind of eh. Because it's the exact same thing as all the other fugitive predators. The only difference is, is the paint scheme and the LED color in the eyes of the bio helmet. So I don't know. Depends upon the popularity of the video. I might do it. Let's see if it's going to be an exclusive somewhere, perhaps a new Walmart exclusive or Target exclusive, being since Walmart is starting now getting NECA figures. I'll have to wait and see. Pretty says, I ought to be on all the figures with a bio helmet. I agree. And I did make that statement in that video too with the Lab Escape Fusion Predator. I think with light up bio helmet eyes like the jungle hunter is yellow the lab escape is red this will be white you'll have different variations or additions depending upon what the movie depicted for the eyes to be white like perfect example of wolf his eyes glue but it was white so i think it should be if you're fully capable of doing it yeah there might be that hardware or production cost involved and then you have the figure wholesale distribution to getting it into our hands where the price might go up just a dollar or two, but it'd still be a standard option for a swappable head with the unmasked and then the regular masked head with the light up eyes, since you're able to do it anyway. All right, Nick. Well, I appreciate your stuff my Nick, and I again apologize for the audio or sound. But I appreciate you letting me know about it. Are NECA still working on that new Wolf Predator figure? Yeah, they are. Randy has mentioned that it will come out probably the end of this year. I think he said there was an ultimate version of Wolf. And I think with there was a prototype that was sh shown with Wolf gauntlets on the figure and I think the figure I'm referring to is alpha I could be wrong but being since they've already done the wolf predator gauntlets on this particular predator that I'm talking about you may find the picture in the NECA toys Twitter account but being since people were taking a look at his armor it's like okay you're definitely working on wolf because we're noticing wolf based parts on this figure so he might be coming out pretty soon Hopefully we can get a City Hunter skin for the Hunter. Yeah, that'd be nice. And I, Bucky's referring to the Predator Hunting Ground skin. I would like to see that because you already have the combi stick spear from Predator 2. 
So if you're able to do that, then you have an exclusive 87 skin maybe next year because it's the 30th anniversary of Predator 2. They may just do something special for a downloadable skin or something related to that. You already have the cutting disc and like I said, the combi stick, that's a Predator 2 base or City Hunter weapon. Why not go ahead and do a skin for the 30th anniversary next year? And there's gonna be a lot of things next year that I have plans for. Next year will be my 30th anniversary myself of collecting this franchise. I'm really excited. I will be doing another giveaway uh, probably around April. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it for my birthday, even though it's my birthday. There's a lot of duplicates I need to get rid of, so I might do a giveaway on that just to get rid of the access that I have. I don't need duplicates of action figures or toys. I might just throw that in there. Would you guys prefer other locations of the game? The Hunt, Embar, the Jungle. Uh, Los Angeles would be a nice way, like a city, but Stargazer might be another option. But they already did that in Predator Concrete Jungle. You had the option of a city. You didn't necessarily have the option of a jungle, but you had the lab, you had the city, you had underground options in Concrete Jungle for the PlayStation 2. There you go, Preta. Yeah. Do it in the desert in the Southwest. I want to see a movie or a game where you are the predator hunting in the desert because they did it in Predator Hunters 2 Dark Horse Comics where they went to I have, is either Iraq or Afghanistan. And that's where I want to see another Predator movie do that. You know, the aftermath of the war for terrorism in relation to Iraq or Afghanistan and see exactly what happened. Is there a tragedy story where there's bodies in a cave? I really liked how Dark Horse Comics did that and I'm thinking, okay, here's another movie option, here's another movie opportunity and yet Dark Horse did it but 20th Century Fox didn't pick that up. Instead it was whole assassin, not that I don't love him, but you had an option of having a better movie based on terrorism and everything and there was a lot of subtle uh, mysteries involved with that where there is underground what's the word I'm looking for just very you know hidden stuff government wise that the government would do to hunt down something else other than terrorists that was just you know a weird option 1920 city yeah but again that was in Predator Concrete Jungle too with the Mafia there was that that was one of the plots in AVPR, but it cost too much, so they made it to a comic in Sand Trap. I don't have Sand Trap. Of all the comic books that I have, I don't have Sand Trap, and I also don't have Dead Space. Yeah, those are the two comic books, because I think Sand Trap and Dead Space came with the DVD release of Alien vs. Predator, and I don't have those two. I can buy them, I hope, on eBay, but those are a lot harder to find than your standard Predator and AVP comics. So here's one I've never heard anyone say. Do it out on the oceans, out at sea, after all Predators are natural swimmers. There was the Predator comic, Hell in Hot Water, where a Predator was hunting and scuba diving. They haven't done that yet. But that's kind of hard to do with everything unless you want to do something that's blue screen and you can shine ripple waters onto the suit where the suit won't get wet because you still have to do a suit but the problem with that is the dreadlocks have to flow as if it's in water I know that's gonna be kind of hard yeah. That's the one I'm missing, Trash. They're exclusive with the statue DVD set. That's the one I'm missing. Those are the only two issues that I'm missing out of that. Now the other thing that I didn't 
want to forget on is Infinity Studio. So you have the bio, or not bio, the diorama, where Arnold is actually at the base of the statue. And this is from, again, Infinity Studio. And that's why I wanted to touch base on this, because they did release more prototype photographs of the diorama. And Infinity Studio is doing a lot of diorama-based piece statues. You had the Predators, the Berserker versus the Classic. Then you had the City Hunter on the pillar of the penthouse suite. So they finally did release a picture of the Jungle Hunter. And this, to me, is just awesome, you know, beautiful. So you have the tree, you have the Jungle Hunter. I'm not sure how this would be painted, but pretty much what it is, the Jungle Hunter will be on top. And then you have Arnold at the bottom of the base of the diorama. So that, I think, is going to be a really awesome piece as well. But I'm going to stick with my making my payments to Crack Tusk. And then next month, I announce on my social media accounts, I am also getting the skinned body one for the scaled accessory from Prime 1. The reason I'm doing that is because even though that is attached to the big game Jungle Hunter uh, exclusive not say exclusive, but the statue for that. And that's the Jungle Hunter version with the four self bubble heads. That accessory is universal to any predator. So I have the accessory skin body, and then I'll have the crack tusk predator to go along with it. Let's see, funny story, I bought an AVB comic and the lady that scanned it looked at me and my boyfriend asking, who is this for? We both say for me. And Trash says, judgmental people asking why you're buying comics. Because comics are popular now. Where do you think Avengers Endgame and Infinity War came from? The Batman, Joker, all the popular movies, they're all based on comics. Oh, I can't wait for Alpha Predator Prodigy. I think because I have to have the Alpha Predator so he can sit on the Bone Throne that I have from NECA. And I'll leave that link up here as well for that video that I reviewed. And I made a comment on that video where I think if any NECA 7-inch figure deserves to be sitting on that Bone Throne is Alpha. I can't wait for Alpha. Especially being an original piece designed from NECA. And I liked how NECA was able to incorporate a lot of the pieces of the original Sean claude Van Damme design from Steve Johnson onto Alpha as a way of saying, well, I can't have that particular creature as a predator because that's a lot of fans don't know about it. We do. But fans of who are just now getting into Predator don't know about the Sean Clan Van Damme version of that story like we do. So they impl implemented it in a brand new original Alpha Predator design. So I like that. Do you have any Ahab figures? Uh, Eric, I do actually. I have the original San Diego Comic Con 2015 version of Ahab, but I have not received the ultimate version of Ahab that was just released. Mainly because I think in relation to getting a figure that's already been released before, it was a San Diego Comic Con exclusive and now it's no longer technically an exclusive. So the value of the 2015 version is no longer valuable. And I don't really collect for value as much as I do for seeing if, like for example, the Ahab Ultimate figure comes with more accessories, it's a better articulation, more sculpt, and better paint. I definitely will put the Ultimate Ahab with the original painting that I'm uh, currently getting. And yes, it's a 16 by 24 original oil painting of issue Predator Fire and Stone number one is the very first issue and it's a cover issue because it was the painting that was used for the cover 
So when I have that figure, I'll have the graded comic book, the original painting, and right below it somewhere will be the ultimate Ahab figure from NECA. Just to have it be an overall conceptualized design of one character and where it came from. So let's see. So much stuff to collect. Someone needs to make an all things Predator Collectibles collector's book. I can't keep up with it all, let alone know what's already out there. I was really thinking about doing that prodigy with my knowledge of collecting with the kits, the bio helmets, the statues, the prop replicas, the artwork, the figures, the games, the t-shirts. I might do another short video for my social media, you know, my Twitter and Instagram. And again, Twitter is at Predator Collect and Instagram is Predator underscore collectibles to show you how many shirts I have. I think I have about a dozen shirts and then you figure with the limited edition art prints i have 15 limited art edition art prints with original comic book pages it's insane now unfortunately some of them you can't even get anymore i don't know if the book will be useful but that's what i was thinking about doing i can keep doing videos like this or live streams to show here's what i have but unfortunately you won't be able to get it because it's a limited run i don't know if that will help you as a collector or not but it's an idea. So let's see. I don't think she was expecting to buy the comic for you. Oh, you were the buying comic. She did ask how Alien and Predator did crossover, to which I explained it to her, and she looked befundled or baffled. Yeah, she's not interested in it. She says, Sparrow, I thought she was having a go at you for buying a comic. I write comics and find people can be patronizing. Yeah, trash they can. This is, I think NECA has released a guide to all the Predators they have made. It's a visual guide that you can download just as a checklist. There's that. But in relation to what Prodigy was saying, there are books, like you have the Overstreet comic checklist book where you can check off, okay, I have this, I have that, here's this current value, based upon the grade that it's at, whether it be a 9.2, 9.4, or whatever have you. I think out of the gate, a comic book will be rated or graded a 9.4, as long as you read it and you don't touch it ever again, or read it, then get graded. I've yet to receive my graded comic book from John Betty. But my point is that basically, I can do a book like that, but it'd be hard to determine if you're looking for value what would be the value of these pieces because usually like i was saying before with neca you release a 2015 sccc exclusive and then you re-release it as an ultimate with more and better things than you did previously in 2015 it kind of defeats the purpose of the valuable aspect if that's what you want to do is keep it in box buy two one to open one to not open you might as well just go ahead and open up the second one because now they have an ultimate version of Ahab. This is my you know, personal opinion. Seriously, you should do a collectible book. Your knowledge is impressive. Thank you, Prada. You even have the history and info from a long time back. I buy a first copy. Uh, that's another way of marketing my knowledge. And as a super fan, it really does humble me when I look at this channel and the growth that I have. And I'm not tooting my own horn. Is just you have to wrap your mind around with relation to a very niche market that with 612 subscribers and consistently growing every single either week when I upload a video, usually there's going to be one or two subscribers because a lot of people who say, okay, well, what are you bringing to the table when it comes to YouTube? A lot of channels focus on mainly just action figures and toys, which is again, nothing wrong with that, but I didn't see a demand, nor did I get my fulfillment from YouTube, other channels when it comes to Predator collectibles. It mostly was just NECA 
and if they did touch on NECA mainly of their own collection, it was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Horror, Predator, Aliens that were kind of all over the place. And that's how a majority of collectors are right now. They're all over the place with their collection. You'll see on one wall, Star Wars, DC, Warner Brothers, Batman, uh, Horror on one wall, and adjacent to that wall is Star Wars, like I was saying, and then this teeny tiny little corner is maybe one or two Predator figures or an alien figure. And then everything else is whatever's trending or popular at the time. People will actually will sell statues or figures to get the next statue uh, that was just announced or released from Sideshow, Prime One, or XM Studios. And a lot of people are just doing that. It's a trend that's very popular right now with flipping statues to get in the next best statue. So if you already have a Magneto premium format figure from Sideshow that was released back in say 2012 and they re-release or release a bigger Magneto statue from say Uncanny X-Men issue whatever, now they have to sell or they feel compelled to sell that original premium format figure they got from Sideshow just to get the bigger version of Magneto. This is kind of ridiculous in my opinion. I did find myself a Viper Predator from a comic book store. It was very small on the side. That's cool. This is what you do want to keep us posted on that too. I'll definitely do that, pretty appreciate it. So I don't know, what do you guys think, if I may ask, based on the collecting market right now, do you feel it's really saturated? Do you feel that the interest of collecting has died down and it's not like what it used to be because there's just so much that's coming out right now? As a Predator fan, I'm all for it. Give me more statues, give me more figures. If I miss out on something, then I have an, another opportunity to getting an ultimate figure as opposed to a regular common figure. The statues, I don't think there's going to be another version of anything depending upon it's from a different company. Like Infinity Studios doing their own version of Predator 2. Then you have Prime 1 that's doing their version of the City Hunter. Yeah, it's still City Hunter, but it depends on various size based upon if it's mixed media, cloth or anything else. Is he standing? Is he in a different pose? So there, I like options from different companies, but when you're talking about a different company that's saying, okay, well, here's City Hunter on this platform, here's City Hunter on another platform. I'm like, okay. I just collect my favorite characters. Yeah, I understand Bucky. For me, financially, I'd rather just stick with what I'm good at and what I already know what's coming out financially, like I was saying before, I can't collect Godzilla. When there's 65 years of Godzilla, then you figure if you're gonna collect Godzilla, you gotta collect his allies and his enemies, it's just like Batman. 80 years of Batman, I can't collect every version of Joker, because then that's a problem in and of itself. Then you have every version of Batman with Mothra, King Ghidorah, there's Mecha Godzilla, there's Baragon, and a whole bunch of other kaijus that come out. And then you figure, well, I like kaijus. Now I'm going to get into Pacific Rim with Gypsy Danger and Knife Head. And you just, it's, it's nonstop. So you have to find a balance in between the two where, okay, if I'm going to collect Godzilla, I'm only going to collect Godzilla and no other character, even though it's a Godzilla franchise. So that's what I do with Predator. I only stick with Predator when I go to a convention. It's Predator or nothing at all. It saves me money. And I'm sorry, if you don't have Predator, you don't have my business. That's just how I look at it. Predator says, I think the market is sorely lacking in Predator collectibles. If it wasn't, then why does Predator stuff fly off the shelves? Depends on what you're looking for, really. That, again, all the reason why I have my channel. If I didn't do the live stream, more than likely, you guys wouldn't have found out about the sale on this particular whiskey. Uh, you wouldn't have found out other than with Bucky mentioning it in the chat with NECA doing the exclusive Target buy one, get one half off sale between now and January 11th. 
most people don't even think about that but that's where I try to provide all the information where it allows you the predator or collector to gain access and to obtain these things if there is an opportunity to do so so I think that's where if I see it I'm gonna make sure okay is there time to provide this information in a live stream or well I'll just post it on my social media accounts both Twitter and Instagram and also on the predator fan community website predatormovies.com I'll post stuff up there as well so Preda I already know that you've seen my stuff uh, I don't know if Trash or Bucky is fully aware of the Predator community on that website, but I'll make sure at the end of this live stream, I'll put that link down in the description where it's www.predatormovies.com where you can sign up to be part of the Predator community. There's also a Predator Reddit subgroup. So if you go to reddit.com, there's a Predator Reddit group there that I post just to gain what not more nor notoriety, but just letting people know, here's where, if you are a Predator fan, I'm gonna post it in its respectable place where fans are. That's usually how I do it. So it says, do you custom any of your neck of Predator figures? I don't. I'm kind of a purist when it comes to neck of figures. I try to just keep them as is, as they are intended same thing with statues and when I started getting into statues I'm not gonna touch up the paint I'm not gonna customize them yeah it may look better but I'm not good at it and it also ruins the whole point of buying a statue so based upon what prime one's doing I don't see a rhyme or reason why I would ever touch repaint or do anything with a prime one statue sideshow is a little bit different like the city hunter maquette and the jungle hunter maquette the jungle hunter maquette's paint application on the head was absolutely horrid but you know nanny d who i've seen and he's a custom painter has painted the jungle hunter maquette head a lot better than what sideshow did but my personal opinion on repainting is if it's an artist's opinion as opposed to accuracy that's usually how I look at it. So every art piece, I'll just bring this up just as an example. Not every person is gonna do the jungle hunter like this, which is why I like getting prints, because this will be different than another artist that does the same character from Predator, right? So that's just, I like collecting different artists' perspective on what a predator will look like based on his art style or her art style. So when someone asks me, what is your hobby or what your interests are, depending upon the person, like Wolf, you were talking about when the woman was looking at you when you're buying your comic book and it was for you, she kind of was like, why? Just say, I'm an art collector. I like buying writing inking paints sculpts stuff like that i consider myself an art collector i will buy art from artists i have original art i have art prints i have action figures the action figures have to be sculpted painted and then casted and molded it's an art form so i'm hard on that side anymore i don't understand how to use it i've only ever posted a few stuff in there yeah as I feel, man, I've never owned really any statue nor such or prayer figures, always one on one. Beautiful print, by the way. Thank you. And I think what I'll also do is I'll leave a link for Terry Huddleston's artwork down in the description as well. He does sell prints off his website, he does have that print on his website along with the unmasked version. I wanted both to show off, but I couldn't afford. Based upon the great comic book, my hotel, gas, food, it was a little bit much. But I'll probably get it sometime soon before he discontinues it. Because I have the portrait version of his artwork he doesn't do anymore. Because it he doesn't feel as an artist when I interviewed him. And unfortunately the video was corrupted. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. So that was going to be my third video last month. Or this month, I'm sorry. And he pretty much said that he wants always up his game when it comes to his art, 
make sure that not only the quality of his art is better, but also the paper and everything for his product is better, which is understandable. So I have some art prints that are not going to be seen anywhere else because they've already discontinued the art. Unless you want to do like an art commission from an artist that you really like, they can do a Predator original piece. That's an option, a little bit more expensive an option, but it's still an option nonetheless. See, do you know what my entire collection of figures, books, cards, masks, everything sits in some walk-in closet? No one's ever seen it. Not a single person I know knows that I collect. That's sad. Everybody that knows me uh, knows that I collect Predator. I mean, my goodness. There's even, I don't know if you can see it or not. Nope. Sorry. But there's a, there we go. There's even a tattoo on my forearm. That's artwork. And it'll be there forever for as long as I live. So, yeah, I'm a huge art person. I'll scream it from the rooftops. I collect. Ain't nothing wrong with it. If you think it's a waste of money, what do you buy? Do you like cars? Do you like fixing cars? Do you like buying parts and have it wear and turn? Have you buy another piece of part you have to go fix and replace? So, your sense of interest in niches. You, that's what you spend your money on, more power to you. I'm not going to judge you for it, even though I think it's a waste of money, where in my opinion, if I have something that's very limited or an original, it will appreciate in value. Yeah, if it's a NECA figure, it will fluctuate, but I've seen NECA figures now from the Series 1 Wave 1 from the 2010 film sell between $70 to $80 when back then when I was hunting them, they're only $15. So, the Atasia Zone. Because I don't want to hear people's mouths, but you're old. Why do you play with dolls? Oh, I've heard of that before. I was dating a girl and I brought in three huge one four scale NECA figures and it was the Unmasked and Masked City Hunter when those first came out. And she was like, you collect dolls? I said, uh, honey, these are action figures and they're $100 a piece. So no, these are not dolls. She still gave me grief about it. I'm like, oh, I guess me and you are not gonna work out after all. Toodles. That's just me. Everybody says I'm a collector and I'm proud. Yeah, show it, flaunt it. You know, not everybody knows about it or no one can gain access to it depending upon what it is if let's say for example you're a millionaire it depends on what you do with your money right your finances are well i'm into cars so i'm going to buy five maseratis and three lamborghinis okay great but how you spend your money is not going to how i spend money how i earn my money is not to, you know be the same as how you earn it it's your lifestyle however what your interests are Go for it. What did you think of the feature of the Predator in the film? I don't know if it's just me, but I did not care for the eyes nor the blood they used for the character. Well, the blood was the same, except for the fact that it was not practical blood. It was all CG, which is probably why it didn't look correctly. So no, I didn't like the blood because again, it was all CG done. The feature of the Predator itself, the eyes are yellowish. I liked how the Fugitive Predator looked unmasked. It definitely gave you that Jungle Hunter 1987 look with a little bit different of variation between him and the Jungle Hunter that was used by Kevin Peter Hall. So Brian, who plays the Fugitive, I think did a marvelous job. I think ADI did a marvelous job of doing the suit. And yeah. Overall, I like The Fugitive. I just don't like The Assassin because he's all 100% CGI. And the way he moved his hind legs, the way they're kind of, not crooked, but they're more tippy-toed when he's walking. That I didn't really care for. But that's just me though. <laughs> nice response to the extra girl. Yeah, I mean, <sighs> You can't judge me if all my bills are paid and 
there was a roof over my head, there was food in the refrigerator, there was clothes on my back, whatever was left over, if I spend however I wanna spend it, and I still have money left over even after spending that said money, then what is it gonna be a harm of unless you want something from me and you're not saying it. I'm not gonna spend my money on you, especially when you're just my girlfriend, you're not my wife. I care about you, but I'm not in love with you. We are just dating and we've only been dating for a month. This is the relationship that I'm referring to, me and her, literally only one month. And she saw me buying action figures, because I can. I'm like, nah, we're, we're good. <laughs> yeah, it's a figure get it right. No, it's not a doll. It's not a porcelain doll. There's a difference between a doll and a figure. Huge difference. Um, it's not uncultured. It's just not her thing, right? She's a typical girl. And like I said, I have, as a guy, I'll do my thing. If you're a girl that I'm dating and you're doing your thing with makeup, purses, shoes, clothes, blouses, dresses, that's fine. Kudos to you. As long as you have the money to do what you enjoy. I'm not going to say a word to you about it because I know I have my interests. You have yours. As long as we find some kind of common ground overall to where we go on dates, we have a good time. We're good. I have no problem. Very much agree with you. Thank you for taking your time to talk with us. No, not a problem, Prodigy. I appreciate you coming out of the chat. And, you know, I'm really appreciative of my subscribers. I appreciate everything as far as the feedback you guys give. Because without you, I really don't have a channel. Yeah, I still upload videos. But the mark that I leave information wise if it's helpful or, or not that's really what I look into when I come when I make a video or a live stream will this make an impact or a change in someone who is just now seeing my channel for the first time will it allow you to grab certain things you were not aware of I think this live stream is actually going to be better for the end of the year because like I said I was going to do it for New Year's Eve but I think for allowing you to get an opportunity to add certain things in your collection now is the best time of doing so with Target and their sales, Silver Screen Bottle and Company with their sales. You know, I think this is just a fantastic opportunity. So have at it, guys. So I appreciate everything that you guys provide for me as as much as I hope to provide for you. This is the relationship that I've always, you know, looked forward to when it comes to doing this channel. Yeah. There's gonna be my goal for 2020 is gonna be a huge transition both emotionally, financially, and physically as well. I'm definitely gonna be, I've already been eating a lot healthier. I've had no bread, no sodas, no junk food because I work in a fast food environment. I have been doing it for the last five years. So I've been around just junk and I'm just like, no more. So. My body, I've already lost about maybe 10 to 15 pounds and I've kept it off because all I drink is coffee in the morning or before I start my shift at work, water for the rest of the day, a glass of milk with my dinner. I have four ounces of rice, four ounces of green beans with lean cut chicken, eggs, vegetables. I have a salad in my refrigerator that I'm gonna eat tonight for dinner. And again, I'm gonna have a glass of milk with it. I might have some green tea before I go to bed. I have no more junk food. I'm a firm believer, and normally I don't use profanity on my channel, but this is my firm belief. If you eat shit, you're gonna look like shit. That's just how I look at it. What you put in your body will reflect on the outside of your body. You'll lose uh, energy, you'll look more fatigued, you'll look like you're sick. It's just, it's not healthy. So that's just how I look at it. I appreciate that, Prita. This is the last room is fantastic, most fun I've had in months. I, I try to do a lot of things that are different. And with implementing certain things in my live streams, I try to have a flow of what we talk about. So if Predator Hunting Grounds has just came out with their trailer, I know it was released probably last month, but with it being now December around Christmas time, did, if you were able to pre-order it, 
and you didn't know what you got when you pre-order the game. I didn't know about the skin or the minigun. Like Bucky provided the information if you do it on the PlayStation 4 store, you're able to get more profile picks per the characters you're playing, like the Predators, the background story or background picture uh, theme for your PS4. Like every single PlayStation 4 has an operating system and you have a background theme in relation to that. So I think when you pre-order that game and have a background theme or an operating system theme for your PlayStation 4 that's focused around Predator Hunting Grounds, that's awesome. Thank you, Bucky, for mentioning that. So uh, I do, I, heck, I even have a Predator cookie cutter because I was planning on doing Predator sugar cookies for Christmas, but I never got a chance to go around doing that because I've, I've always been focused on eating healthy. And my cheating day, I've already had cupcakes <laughs> and cookies that my mom made for Christmas. So that's just, I'm trying to lay off the sweets at this current point. Well, person says, my goal for 2020, learning to drive, get my lazy butt into a driving school if possible. I'm trying to sell my car, but I have an emotional attachment to my car because I've had it for 13, 14 years, it was bought in 2006, here is now 2019, so 13 years. And it's never given me any mechanical problems. It's now starting to show wear and tear because it has little over, I think, 203,000 miles on it. So it's just, I really don't want to get rid of it just yet. It was my home for eight months. I lived in my car. And then I brought home my 10 year old son from the hospital in that car. So I, me and that car has been through a lot as far as memories goes. So this is my glycerin, I can't get past 95 pounds. Oh wow, Prita, I'm sorry. Yeah, high carbs constantly and I eat all day long, just burn it all up. You have a high metabolism, right? Frida, my metabolic rate, I gain weight very easily. So I have to watch what I eat. If I ate every two hours of just nothing but junk food because I'm bored, I'm a bored eater. If I get bored, I'll eat. And I will gain easily two to three pounds a day just eating junk food. So I can't do that. Uh, Wolf Predator, if you're talking about the <laughs> cookie cutter, I'll send you a link. Um, it should still be on my Instagram account. If you go through my Instagram feed, there's a picture of a cookie cutter. And you actually can buy it on Etsy. If you go on Etsy.com, type in Predator Cookie Cutter. It's being mailed or shipped to you from Argentina. I'm pretty sure. And it's 3D printed. So you'll have to clean it up a little bit but it works beautifully. But you have to figure out the consistency of cookies that you're making. Sugar cookies would be your best bet for making Predator cookies. And then I also put it on one of my videos too, and I'll leave a link up here in case for the news by is curious. But at the end of the, I think it was the 30th anniversary. No, it was the anniversary uh, video. At the end of it, I was eating a cookie and watching Predator at the end of the video. Yeah, so pretty cookie cutters are a thing. I really wanted a beanie from Fry Rags. Missed out on it. That's okay. I'll get it on eBay, I'm pretty sure. Prodigy, I'm sorry, it's one of be it's Twitter is at Predator Collect. I was gonna do Predator Collectibles, but I think the characters couldn't capture it, it was too long. So it's just Predator with a capital P, Collect with a capital C. That's on Twitter and on Instagram is all lowercase Predator underscore collectibles. Or if you just look up my name, Glendon Taylor, you should be able to find it that way too. But I post very little on the social media accounts usually because there's if I don't buy anything new, uh, there's not a lot of information to provide because I try to provide most of the information here on the live streams at the end of the, each month, depending upon what is being announced. I usually want to talk about it with you guys like we're doing right now. 
But yeah, you can follow me those two ways. What's up, Mike? Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Yeah, you have a serious like high metabolism, Prita. So I just redid it. So what is my next big printer purchase that you're striving for? That's a good question. Well, I just started, like I said, making the payments for the Crack Tusk 1-4 scaled Prime 1 statue. That's going to be my very first Prime 1 statue in my collection. The... I guess if you can for me, Preta, what would be your definition of big? Is it big in dollar amount? Is it big in size? If we're referring to the dollar amount, nothing else, because I'm, you know, working minimum wage. Yay. Okay. I appreciate it, Bucky. So you, you tagged me on Twitter based on what the background will be. I want to get more original comic book art in my collection. I'm already eyeing on a few pieces that are inexpensive, so there that will be a thing. As far as dollar amount, I'm going to be slowly just working on Crack Tusk because he's one four scaled and it's my very first big statue. So yeah, that's probably going to be what I'll be focusing the most on, unless my income changes. So that should be changing it pretty soon. Yeah. So it'd be Craig Tusk would be the size. And he's also the most expensive. If I had enough money, I would actually buy a screen used prop from Predators that I'm also eyeing. And it's not that necessarily expensive, but it's $2,000. So. That would be a big purchase if I had the capability of doing it on top of getting the Crytek statue from Prime 1. No problem, Prodigy. God bless you, man. Again, Happy New Year. And just make sure you stay safe New Year's Eve if you are either working or not. I won't be working. I always have Tuesdays off, which is also there will not be a video on Wednesday mainly because I know it's New Year's Eve but there will be a video the following Wednesday just as an FYI Phoenix Comic Con see this is what sucks I used to live in Arizona and I went every year from 2010 all the way up until 2014 and then I ended up coming here in Alabama I hate this state. So, if there is a possibility, because I know fan it's Phoenix Fan Fusion now, Preta. Phoenix Fan Fusion will be in May, I think. It's usually it's held on Memorial Day weekend, the end of May. I think they've changed it now to the beginning of June, because they couldn't close on the convention center that date or time frame for that weekend. And it usually you starts on Thursday and it runs all the way up through Sunday for four days. I'll hopefully try to make it, but that's cutting it kind of close. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> the pretty saying she used to live here. Now she lives in Arizona and we just kind of switched. That's funny. What are the odds of that happening? So yeah, I used to live in Arizona. I was born and raised in Florida. I moved out to Arizona for the love of my life at the time. She and I split up, but I was in Arizona for five years. My son was born in Chandler Medical Center right there, I think off of the ramp, one of the Chandler ramps off of the Loop 101. And I came out here 2015. Yeah, absolutely. I like to show how I collect at cons. If any of you are going to a con, I try to hit cons. I went to the Knoxville Fanboy Expo in Knoxville, Tennessee. That was awesome. Like I said, that's where I met Ian White. And then I also met artist um, 
forgot his name, but I'll leave a link for that interview as well. I went to Huntsville Comic Con in Alabama, and I also went to the one in Kentucky, the Galaxy Con in Louisville, Kentucky, or Louisville, as they call it. Old person says, I hate living in Florida. It's a great retirement house, vacation spot, and I hate the heat. I love the heat. I have to have heat. Right now, it was cold. The coldest it ever got was around 30 to 28 degrees. My body does not like the cold. I actually got sick when I came back from GalaxyCon in Louisville, Kentucky. I don't know who I got it from, but per my live stream I did last month, and I'll leave a link for that too, I actually got the con crud. I got really sick. Uh, it was about a week's worth of miserable colds and aches and sniffiness and coughing. Nope, not good. So my body does really well in the heat. I guess it's because that's I'm a Floridian. I know I don't like Florida as far as the type of community that Florida provides, but the heat I'm all about. Arizona, as Preta already knows, is a dry heat, so you don't experience it as much. With Florida being around the ocean and humidity, you'll feel the heat a little bit differently. I live in Virginia, and there's not just enough geek culture here. Yeah, Mike, it's the same way here, dude. Here in Alabama, I mean, there's Huntsville. Huntsville, Alabama is bigger in geek culture because that's where NASA's space center is. That's where the heart of some of the NASA shuttles came from and some of where NASA made history for the moon walking and moon landing stuff. It's actually right here in Alabama in Huntsville. But where I live is near nothing but the Bible Belt. Not a huge fan. There's no one I can relate to, no one to talk to. I just go to work, do my own thing. And even when I go to cons, I feel isolated because no one really collects Predator. Usually, right now, it's My Hero Academia. It's Batman, Joker, whatever's popular or trending. So I was able to get really cool things like the art prints I just showed. But in regards to other parts or aspects of the con, I can go through a convention in one day and not have to go throughout the entire weekend because I've already got what I needed out of the con, which is sad. Because at Phoenix Comic Con, I would go all four days, Thursday through Sunday, and still able to see new things or be able to get my comic books graded. Because my way I do my days at cons, Thursday is my comic book day, Friday is my artist alley walkthrough, Saturday I'll be with my friends who dress up and suit up as predators, Sunday is my toy day when I can grab good, decent deals on toys that I haven't added to my collection yet. That's my entire con experience. Unfortunately, for GalaxyCon, I was there all three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and because I was on, a, I guess, a budget, and majority of the figures were all NECA, which is not a problem, it's just I can buy those things at a later date. I ain't really worried about it. There weren't a lot of art pieces that I can buy that were prayer related. That was problem number one. Number two, there was only two artists, no, well, technically three, in relation to comic book artists that were there that had done Predator pieces for Dark Horse. So it wasn't as a Predator fun-filled day at GalaxyCon that weekend when I went. I used to live in New York. See, in New York, I can think is a much more better place when it comes to geek culture, but not Alabama or Virginia cosplayers. I don't fit the description of a cosplayer. I can't. I was dating a woman who was a cosplayer. And that's all she did. She would spend money, nothing against the judge or about it, but that's her main priority when he went to a con, was just to dress up. She would sometimes buy art and collectibles, stuff like that, but that wasn't her main focus. She mainly went just to go to cosplay. So if you're a, by definition, a cosplayer, that your sole purpose is to dress up throughout the entire weekend and have each outfit for each day, and that's it, you go home, I 
No, I, I can't do that. Nothing again judging anybody who watches this in our cars players, but I need to get more out of the con than just cosplaying in an outfit. So that's just me. Pretty says, I think I have predator DNA in me. The hotter the better. If it's below 75, I sock some sweater on. I have my heat on my house right now. It's set to 79. My heater, when I have, I'm just, I'm thinking. I'll have it on at 75 to 80. That's my comfort level. If it's anywhere below 70 degrees, 68 is okay. When you start getting down to 64, 50, that is a no for me. No, thank you. I'm cold at 55, 60 degrees. It has to be 75 or 80. Has to be. Yeah, I know how it feels, Wolf. I'm sorry. You and me both, I think I'm, I'm isolated more so here in Alabama than I've ever felt because I'm not an Alabamian at all. These people care about football. If you're in Alabama, you have to pick between Auburn, which is a college, and or Alabama also as a college. They don't have NFL football here. They don't even have a hockey team. I don't know if Alabama has a basketball team. It is strictly football. You go to church, you go hunting or fishing, and if you even so much as care about getting a girl, how big is your pickup truck? It's ridiculous. It is not my culture. This is a culture shock for me. Yeah, Mike even says no lower than 68 for me. And for, yeah, that's just me. Right now in my room, I think it's about 75 for me. I can't do it. Don't like the cold weather. My body will react uh, in a negative way. I'll get vulnerable to sickness easily if it's cold. Just because my immune system doesn't shut down, it just reacts slower when it's a lower temperature. First, I like the Chicago Dolphins. Then the football bats. And I will probably be the Heisman Olympic Spring. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I have nothing against sports. It's just when you treat a sport just as equally as you do with Christianity, that to me is a problem. I had one customer at the fast food chain that I work at when he asked me, do you go for Auburn or Alabama? I said, I don't like football, period. He looked at me and said, what kind of Alabamian are you? I flat out told him and I said, I'm sorry, sir, I am not an Alabamian. I am not from here. Uh, I don't think myself is part of this community. I never will. He was kind of taken back about that when I, how I said it. And it wasn't being derogatory or insulting. It was just, I'm, I don't do what normal Alabamians do. Their mentality is different the way they think of lifestyle and how they perceive their own life here is different. I'm, I'm a, to me, I'm above that. Not to make myself better, it's just when your mentality is, well, if you're not doing this, then you're not on par with me, which is fine. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't care about football. There's more important things in life than going to church and football. And I know because I've been out of the state. There are some people here in Alabama that have not left this state to visit or to grow mentally outside of their Alabamian lifestyle. So I've been to California, Virginia. I've been to Kentucky, Tennessee. I've been to Arizona. I've lived in Florida. I've even stopped in Texas. I've visited other places. Mike says, hey girl, want to see my horror collection? See, I don't even do that. I barely even talk to the women here. The quality of women is a little bit different uh, here as well. So I've been single for five years, roughly. I mean, I've talked maybe, but I've not officially broke that, yeah, you're my girlfriend now. 
and I've got more things to focus on. I don't care for sports and understanding me. Yeah, same here. Never been a huge fan of the mainstream sports, at least ones that mainstream to the USA. Yeah. Neither have I. So I think, guys, we've pretty much talked about all that I think we could talk about. I just want to just come out and say Merry Christmas. I hope your Christmas was very good. I know we're in the middle between Christmas and New Year. But I also want to wish you a Happy New Year. And I thank you very much for all the topics that we talked about today. I hope that you were able to get something out of this live stream regarding NECA, Infinity Studio, the other stuff that I was able to collect or things that are on sale right now. Again, make sure that if you have not bought your own bottle of Dutch whiskey, I think now is the best time to do so. But it's 9 o'clock. I have, again, a salad in the refrigerator I'm going to eat. I have laundry to do. I'm sorry to keep it short, but I just want to wish you guys a very Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I love you all. And if you haven't subscribed yet, if you are a Predator fan, hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification. And it helps me out. It will help you out as much as I can provide as much information to you as a Predator fan as possible. And until I see you next mm, two weeks from now for another review video, because uh, I, again, we'll be going shopping for the Ask for Christmas ship specials just to get some naked figures and a few other things. Love you guys, happy hunting, and I'll see you guys next time. Mike, again, Bucky, Prita, love you all. Talk to you later.